Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Boardroom Forum Live. My name is Ngaban Diweni. I'm a partner in PwC. And today I've got a really special guest, Craig Deploy. He looks after, was a consultant for PwC in terms of cybersecurity. Our series theme today is cybersecurity and, and um, oversight. And we're really going to unpack what does this really mean? Clearly, it's all well and good that corporates are using technology, introducing technology, automating their businesses. However, it does create particular challenges. Is it profitable? Yes. Does management also always think about the bottom number? Yes. But what risk does this pose? And from a cybersecurity perspective, I'm going to be chatting to Craig today to really understand what that means. Um, so, Craig, if we talk about a cybersecurity incident, what does that mean? Uh, typically, Q, it is how effectively a company can respond once an incident has happened. So an incident uh, could, for instance, take the form of a uh, server going down or a breach of a network. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, there's two different um, angles to an incident. It's either a malicious actor, such as a hacktivist or a, a hacker or a disgruntled employee, etc. But there could also be the other angle where a, a cyber incident is, uh, you know, one of the hardware servers going down and not being able to function and bringing production to a halt. Right. Um, it could also be a third party that, you know, has access to your network and accidentally did something or there could be a system glitch. So there's those types of incidents as well. It's not always necessarily a hacker that has breached your network and stolen your data, mm -hmm. you know, like everybody assumes it to be. Yeah, so we, we read a lot in the press about these particular incidents, the ones you've referred to that, look, someone's hacked into a particular network and they've got access to information. Um, but its frequency seems to be becoming more frequent, if I can use that term. Um, from a landscape perspective of these incidents, what does the color look like or how frequent uh, mm. do, you, do you see this? You so it is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. um, so the Cybersecurity Hub, for instance, indicated um, on their website in the public domain the other day that there was um, something like 4,100 reported wow. incidents or breaches, um, which is over something like 2 billion records that were stolen. Hmm. Um, if you go and look at um, other research that other companies have done, the general consensus is that there's a rise from 21 to 2022 um, of approximately 20 to 25 percent in um, cyber incidents. And 20 percent rise year on year becomes a significant amount. Mm. So yeah. those are big numbers. And w when you start unpacking them in that particular fashion, it really um, brings one to question. So what does a proactive response look like? Because if it's that frequent, I guess corporates and management need to be ready to resolve those uh, pretty speedily. Exactly, Q. So we always encourage our clients to be proactive. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily like to do the reactive stuff. It obviously means that something's gone wrong. Right. Um, although we could, and we always do help the clients when something has gone wrong. But if we had to go and um, tackle incident response in a proactive manner, then we would be able to respond to these incidents in a in a better fashion and it will obviously assist in getting the operations back up running quicker it will cost less financially it will damage your relationship um, relationships with your clients and your um and your stakeholders much less um so yeah it will be less damage less costs and you'll be able to recover quicker yeah so recovery is important. And um, as PwC, um, what do you do to ensure that uh, your clients are actually proactive and, and really getting to the nub of these issues? Okay, uh, so what we normally do is we start the client off with a maturity assessment. There are international standards out there like NIST, which is your National Institution of Standards and Technology. Mm -hmm. And then there's your ISO, International Information Security Standards, um, one of them being 27001, etc. cetera. Um, and those international good practices have got certain controls that you can check and test 
and guide you in um, being proactive in a from an incident response uh, point of view. Um, now that consists basically of a myriad of controls, policies, so there's governance, technologies that we look at, as well as the processes and procedures that we look at, so that when these things happen, at least these policies are defined, the people have been defined, and the technologies are there to help you recover. Right, I guess uh, recovery is really where you want to put all your clients at, but. When you think about the maturity assessment, what does that specifically consist of? So, depending on the international framework that you choose, either NIST or ISO, and there's a couple other ones, um, there's a, a set of domains, and each one of those domains have got a set of controls within them. Um, those controls cover cybersecurity, which is your people, processes, and technologies that you have in place and uh, you know having these controls in place at least gives you some comfort that, that did something if something happened you've got a procedure and a policy to govern the recovery process um, and that really assists the clients also to to know where the gaps are and how to you know build a roadmap to say okay well you know if I've got these five things in place but these hundred things um, there's an issue with Mm -hmm. We can then focus on those hundred things to obviously increase that maturity. So that's very interesting. So once you've looked after policies and procedures, you've got your people in your organization trained up um, and certainly you've got the technology in place and you've built all these protections. Surely, if I think about it, there's something more that I could do. Is it possible for me to simulate an attack um, or a cyber incident and then see kind of what happens? Would that be something you'd recommend? Definitely, Q. Um, it's funny you ask that. We have a myriad of technologies to help companies simulate um, different cyber attacks. Um, the one technology I'm just thinking of the top of my head now is where we actually simulate the client's network in a real world scenario where we actually um, simulate the technologies that they're using. So mm -hmm. if they're using a certain type of firewall or they're using a certain type of database or whatever, we actually simulate those firewalls, databases, endpoint servers within this technology. And we then um, get the technical guys to come and log onto the network. We throw a ransomware or a SQL injection or some type of, type of hack, mm -hmm. and they then have to respond in a real world scenario, you know, but actually it's simulated and it helps them to really practice and um, recover a lot quicker in those scenarios. That's, that's excellent because if I'm management, I'd think that way to say, well, where are my weaknesses? And I'd like to be prepared and, and, and to be ready. But if we think just beyond management, because it's not only a management responsibility, if I'm sitting as a, as a board member, um, what questions should I be asking? What should I be aware of um, on the organizations that I sit at? Mm. Look, a cyber, a cyber incident affects everybody from mm -hmm. the board level all the way down to you know, the staff level that are operational. And um, they just need to be aware of these different type of cyber attacks um, without getting too technical, but more sort of the ramifications and the the sort of um what can i say uh implications implications yes exactly thanks for that the implications that a cyber attack has on a organization um we have got a, a gamification training which makes it a lot more fun um where we actually simulate certain attacks and you know the different board members sort of half of them attack and half of them defend and it really makes it a fun experience, but at the same time, you're learning and feeling the pressure of real world um, cyber attacks. Gamification is the way to go. And as we yes. learn, um, I'd be interested to be one of the attackers, not the defenders, because I think it's more difficult to uh, defend than to attack. That's amazing. And ladies and gentlemen, um, I hope you've got a sense of what the cybersecurity oversight looks like. From what Craig has shared today, clearly it's not something that happens infrequently. I think the numbers you've shared are quite staggering. Um, but also the services you provide are also um, quite important. It's about being proactive, 
not reactive. The policies need to be in place. Um, you got to have a maturity assessment just to see where you are from your cybersecurity perspective. And as I said, I hope it's uh, giving you a quick lens and a quick view as to how you can think about cybersecurity in your organization. Thank you.